of Homestead Cooking and Natural Living. This is your Bartlesville Public Library producing this show for you because we are very interested in you learning about health literacy. What is health literacy? Well, it's the way we eat, it's the way we live, it's the way we do everything that promotes health for our bodies, our minds, the well-being of our spirits, all of that that makes us healthy Oklahomans. Oklahomans, yes. We have a problem in Oklahoma. We've talked about this before. We are 48th in the nation for negative health literacy. What would that possibly mean? It means that we have too much obesity in our state, we have too much heart disease, and we don't move around enough. And that's why the Health Literacy Department offers you wonderful cooking classes, wonderful health classes, and of course, over, uh, I think, just short of a dozen exercise classes and everything is free. Today, you are here for Homestead Cooking and Natural Living, which is a do-it-yourself journey back in time, reconnecting gardening, food preparation, and natural living off the land. And Zydel Buchanan is our instructor, and she has so many wonderful tips for you today that she's going to talk to you about. We're talking about the many faces of squash today, all the different ways you can prepare it. And Zydel ran into a little problem with that squash that she's going to tell you about, which will make you want to be able to grow that squash yourself. So without further ado, I'm Joni Elmore, your literacy advocate, saying hello to Zydel Buchanan. Thank you so much for being with us today and take it away. All right. Well, thank you for uh, uh, getting on the roads today because uh, as, as last month, Mother Nature is, was a little bipolar as well. So uh, she's been kind of unpredictable to go from 70 degrees to freezing in 24 hours. So. Um, uh, thank you for braving the roads to come out today. So, um, as Joni was alluding to, um, uh, when we went to prep for uh, the show and we're picking up our items, one of the things that was really um, noticeable was supply chain issues. And when I say supply chain issues, I mean supply chain issues that we would not, we would definitely take for granted on the availability for it. Um, we actually had to make some modifications for the show just to kind of. Um, I, get what we wanted to get uh, represent and get accomplished. So um, one of the things that was interesting was there was no spaghetti squash. There was no kombucha squash. There was no pumpkin. There was absolutely the only squash that was actually available, which is a winter squash. And this should be where we should see most prevalent is the winter squash. The only winter squash they have is acorn squash. Um, obviously we'll cover a little bit later. They had, uh, they did have butter, uh, um, the, uh, uh, butternut squash, but they didn't have anything else. Everything else was a summer squash. So um, jalapenos, it was just an interesting uh, lay of the land to see the things that were missing in our normal grocery store, um, which again goes back to, we'll talk a little bit further about why we should, why we should invest in, in, into our own garden and our own health uh, with that. So with that being said, guys, we are going to do a stuffed acorn squash. It is amazing. And I even got my fire fire husband to think that it was also amazing and yummy goodness because um, he's the meat and potato man in our house. So uh, one of the things we're going to have me start off with first is going to be the acorn squash because this is it has to cook for uh, 30 minutes and then it has to be switched over um, and flipped to be another 15 minutes. So this will be the longest part of the entire cooking process. So with that being said, I really was looking for your favorite squash. Um, to see if I can make something else with it, but it wasn't an option. I actually will cut both ends of these off because um, it will allow for me to cut through the middle easier um, than to uh, try to cut through the, 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 uh, the, the top part there. So, and I will also tell you, I probably need to bring different knives for this because these Skittish. Um, some of you might have known that I had a, uh, a argument with a mandolin blade at the Drummond family house um, right before Christmas and ended up with a couple of stitches. <laughs> so. 
So you cut your finger? Yes, I ended up with seven stitches. Yeah, I cut that whole base of my thumb and face off. So um, so when I say I, I have a little apprehensive of sharp objects now, <laughs> I think I have a little bit of post-traumatic stress syndrome over it. Like, oh, don't do that. And I think I told you guys even in our last one, our last, uh, our last class was, you know, one of the big things that we do with Homestead is nothing here is going to be wasted. So every bit of this that we just cut off either um, will feed to our animal or feed to our, you know, our cows, chickens, pigs, or it will go into compost. So it will get a second life. The other thing too is the same way with the seeds. Um, as we empty out the seeds, um, I will actually wash and dry these and they will become seeds for future garden opportunities or seeds popping with our friends. Um, like with pumpkin or any of these, they're especially a larger seed and you can actually roast them and actually make them a snack as well. So all we're doing here is removing all the guts and getting as, as much as a little bit of the fiber stuff that you can out. Um, but super, super easy. So is the cooking time the same for any kind of squash? No, I'm going to say it's going to be different based upon just like how you would have a piece of meat. So like if I was to cook a pumpkin, as thick as it would, it's th thicker and um, more dense um, outside layer, I could potentially cook it for um, an hour or longer to cook it all the way through, and that's still even opening it up. So um, the butternut squash, and because it was a little bit thicker, um, it, it took a little longer to cook than this. So this one's smaller, and this one takes probably the least amount of time. Okay. The acorn squash, though, this, it, you know, when you start looking at squashes, there's so many, there's a, such a variety, and they all have such different flavors and textures. And the one thing about acorn squash, it's very, it's probably the closest I think to a potato or um, uh, consistency maybe. So when, you know, when we were doing a stuffed acorn squash, um, it reminds me more of a stuffed baked potato. Maybe that's a better way to, to put it. So. So we're, what we're going to do is just layer these up on a pan, open faced, and I'm going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil on it. And why we're doing that is it gives us a little bit of a, a, a colder spot for the salt and pepper that we're going to put on it as well. Just so super simple. Again, you could use you, you know, your dietary if you don't want salt. You know, you can replace it with whatever you want. But this is going to be just a super, um, just a salt and pepper. Uh, one of the things I really like, then um, we do this at home, is we make a we pre um, not have these at uh, We make a gar a garlic salt and pepper shaker. So we get it all at one time. So I don't have to get three things out. I just put it all on one shaker and shake it out, and it makes makes it a little easier. No cover, no nothing. We're just going to stick it right in here and we're going to let it cook for 30 minutes and then we're going to flip it over and that will grill, that will actually grill the outside of the, um, of, the, uh, of the squash, give it a little bit of a color to it. So while that's happening, the next thing that has a little bit of time is going to be the, we're going to do a rice mixture with this. So um, what I'll tell you on the rice, it is only a cup and a half 
and if you know when you look at your rice recipe um, it always says hey one cup it's a one to, to two um, if you do a one cup you're going to end up with three cups of rice so just you have to look at the math is you need to do a half a cup of rice so you only get one and a half cups because if not you'll have a ton of rice left over unless you're wanting to eat it you're going to waste a half a uh, cup and a half of rice so just tell you that in advance because i didn't pay attention when i did that so do as i say <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah don't make the same mistake i made so and again, this or other, you could change and do all that you have. All. There's so many different varieties of rice out there. Um, and this was just a plain white rice. But you could do a whole grain. You could do any any of the ones you want. Every heart desires. And I will tell you, almost everything within this recipe, it's kind of, I'll say a recipe is kind of the guiding a guiding principle of how, how uh, it should be put together. But there's so much here that you could actually modify or change um, because one of the things that we're going to cover is we're going to be doing a, a, a turkey a ground turkey but you can do um, any other meat that you want I mean you could use sausage you could do pork ground pork you could do hamburger whatever is in your dietary but this is where um, I'm, I'm going to do a turkey um, a ground turkey but you can change it out to whatever you want okay it's just your, your protein source you can actually do this entire recipe too without any meat in it. it. The consistency of everything that goes in there. You can do it without meat as well. I don't know. I'm having some technical difficulties on getting this to come on. And um, let me see if I would just. Saving me from staying here. We're gonna let this warm up. What we're gonna do next is actually prep the meat for the inside. Um, we'll do these. In, it's gonna go in two different stages. So we'll do uh, uh, the sage turkey first, and then we'll do all the vegetables um, separately, and then we'll do a combination together. So. Uh, so do we need for you to talk a little louder? Oh, perhaps? I apologize. I'll talk okay. louder. <laughs> Nobody's no. ever asked you to talk louder. No, they haven't. <laughs> Especially my husband. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, um, again, when um, this is going, we're going to use eight uh, 
sage leaves. Um, this is, again, a super easy, if you in your garden, just having an herb garden like this, you can obviously pull this out of your cupboard and have it all dried and you can, you can you know, make it directly from there. But there is nothing, like the flavor of having your own herbs is so differently, the texture, the flavor. So um, this is a really easy thing to grow in your herb garden is sage. So we're gonna use eight of these leaves. And we're just gonna chop them up. And again, roll the compost and reuse uh, all the ends off of them. This is um, what is interesting about the sage is um, it almost has a uh, it, the texture in it kind of reminds, I, don't, I won't say fleecy, but it has a different, such a soft texture to it that you you would not, when you're not used to, uh, when you take it out of, a, out of a jar or out of your spicing, it's all dry. And this right here is like such a velvety feel to it that um, one of those unique things about having fresh. We've started our seedlings for this year, and um, uh, my husband had built me a greenhouse um, and finished it up uh, during the fall, and we don't have power to it yet, so the kitchen has been overtaken with seedlings. <laughs> uh, so next year, I'll actually go into the greenhouse. So just a real light touch of olive oil um, in here. What we're going to do is we're actually going to get this nice and hot and basically brown our sage, okay? So it will have a little bit of a, you'll hear that little fry, but it really, what it's doing is it's a little want it kind of to be kind of crispy. As it does that, we'll give it a stir. This is gonna be a very uh, aroma, uh, uh, a little bit there, get that browning, and then we'll just move to the next stage, which will be for, because uh, once that's browned, we're going to move directly into adding the meat. And again, this is just a, this is a brown uh, uh, turkey. So we're just going to we're going to continue to let this brown and get to a point where once it's brown, we'll pull it off and then we'll use what's um, kind of the bond on the bottom again will be reused in our next layer. Just 
Well, I'm trying to clear it out. It just keeps saying hot. It won't let me adjust the. It'll say hot. Okay. Crazy stuff. Yes, it's not my best friend, but that's all right. We're gonna get the goal as soon as it acts like it's. What's well, weird? It did it to the, both the top and the bottom here. Well, let's just see if it just needs to pull down and, and see if we'll move it forward from there. So, um, with that being said, we'll uh, move on to the next item. Um, what we're going to do next is, uh, actually, we should be prepping for this ready in a second, is we'll start on the onion. Uh, you can use any kind of onion. Um, I'm a big proponent of red onion. It has such great flavor, but you could use a Vidalia or anything else in, this, in the same recipe, whatever's on hand. Um, so don't feel like you're again married to what the what the recipe says. I almost threw it away in the trash. Instead of putting it in my We got one to go. We got one to go. Yay! Woo! Progress. <laughs> we finally got it. We got it to go. It's temperamental. I probably need. I need to have a, another lesson on uh, st stove etiquette. It probably is like you need to touch me softer or be kinder or talk gently to me, um, so that I will cooperate with you. Uh, onions is another one of those, uh, you know, like I said, you could pick any choice you want. And um, I also would say any choice of how you want it to be diced. Um, I'm, I'm kind of a, like, I love chunky. So, but if you want it to be, you, you can dice it to whatever level you want. I kind of like mine um, chunky, but you could, you can dice this down as small as you want um, and use any kind of a, you could even probably even use like a food processor if you wanted it to, to be even uh, further uh, into smaller chunks. So, okay. progress. <laughs> so, um, so as I was saying, is we were we got our seedlings started, and um, this year we've done a lot of different unique things with getting our seedlings started, and we used. Uh, Instead of pods, we recycled our old uh, paper towel holders on the middle. So we cut them down, and those became the pods um, for the plants. So we, instead of sticking it, we could have put it in a recycle, but we're reusing it in a different way. So every one of those little pods cut down is now a baby planter. So excellent way to recycle and reuse. We're still probably a couple of weeks. Well, mm -hmm. our, our, if you follow the um, Farmers Almanac for Oklahoma, um, we look probably more into April time frame for when we'll actually start to put the plants in. But what's nice about right now when you start your seedlings, um, your seedlings, you know, you put a couple of seeds in per pod because um, you don't know what's going to uh, uh, propagate. So you may only get one seed or no seed. So this gives you time to kind of prepare for, hey, it did not turn out the way I wanted to, or uh, that you may have to thin them out, meaning I had two or three that populated, and now I can either move it, transplant it to something else, or um, uh, terminate it all together. So. I don't know if you guys have seen your seedlings before. Have you ever had to buy, if you bought seedlings at Walmart, you know, they're like three or four dollars a piece. So this allows you to. Uh, so we have a Facebook viewer. Uh -huh. 
who says that she can't see what you're doing. So we're going to make oh, it easier. Oh, her. I apologize. That's okay. We're not running the overhead cameras okay. today, so I'm going to move that right like that. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. See, I got over being nervous from last time. Now I got user error this time. <laughs> please have grace for me, please. <laughs> Every time I'm sure this is going to be a learning moment on, on why I have no matter what. So. so now that this is cooked up, I'm going to actually move it over to um, just removing it all together. Um, and we'll start our next layering. Yes, I know you're telling me it's hot. All right. Oh, and it at least stayed on this time, so it did not go completely off the grid for me. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to add just a touch more olive oil uh, to the pan. And now becomes all the other yummy goodness that we're going to do. So we're going to add in the onions, mushrooms, garlic, and we're going to basically saute it down um, until it's kind of really soft. So adding in the onions, um, and then adding in the mushrooms. And then we will, I'm going to let that just kind of simmer there for a little bit. And we're going to add in garlic. And every one of the things right here, we can all, uh, everything here is something that you can kind of grow in your garden. Um, I mean, and then, again, these are something also easy. I mean, you could pick up, uh, sprinkle the garlic, you know, uh, raw garlic as well. Um, from the grocery store, but these here, fresh, fresh is easy, as fresh as kind of is best. Um, Last time I brought my dandy dandy. What'd you say? Your rice. Your rice. Um, Thank you. Okay, you're reminding me and you're staying on. Okay. Last time I brought my handy dandy curling press and made my life a little easier, but this time um, I did not bring it, so I have to do all of it by hand. And again, if you're a big, if you're a garlic uh, fan, you know, here's your chance to put as much as you want in there. I, I, I know for at my house, my husband would be like, put more in, put more in. Just like jalapenos, just put more in. To let this kind of just cook down, um, get the mushrooms nice and soft. We will also be adding in some thyme. Again, another super easy one for uh, from the garden if you wanted to do. We used, um, if you guys remember from the three sister soup, this was another one that, that we added. It's another uh, go to. This is one that I also say is you can chop it up and put it directly in there, but I would say is you, um, it has too many stems on it, so you could have a little a crunchy stem, and so I kind of like to uh, basically just pull the, uh, the, the leaves off of it to give it, so I don't have to worry about having an extra crunch that I may or may not like in my, in my food. 
but this does add more time um, to your process, but you'll be happy with it. And, you know. um, also, the time, we're going to put this time in now, but we will also need, we will also garnish the top of it again with some time. And uh, so uh, while I'm here, I'll to, to make sure I have some more credits both. Um, this is going to give it a really great flavor and if you want again if you want that more of a sausage type of a um, taste and um, obviously thyme and sage and all that uh, you could add in more to give it a, um, an additional pop Even though it wanted to boil over, it is absolutely perfect and on par. So one of the things that's unique about, so we're using a winter squash, is not all winter squashes you eat your skin because it's super thick. Um, but what is interesting is the acorn squash is, is thin and you can eat all the way down to the skin with no problem. It's, it's, it's very, it's peely. It's, it's super easy. It, it's, uh, it's actually thinner than a potato skin. So you could eat the entire, um, all of it. You can eat the entire thing. And obviously during the summer months, uh, the squash that you'll see most predominant um, is going to be your zucchini and your yellow squash. Um, that is a great, great side dish for, especially in the summer, if you cook out a lot, you can slice those and put a little olive oil on top of your grill and put them, um, lay them down flat, a little salt and pepper, flip them over. Great, great um, uh, side dish from a vegetable perspective. And you can do that with both the zucchini and the, uh, the yellow squash. Uh, one of the things I, that happened to me last year is I had so much zucchini, I I couldn't give enough away. So my other alternative last year, and it worked out really well, is I uh, uh, blended up my zucchini and I put it in my spaghetti squash. I put it in my salsa, and it was a great thickener. And I, it got it, it had another life, and no one would ever oh the zucchini salsa. Well, they would no. It would know any different. It tastes just the same. It's a great thickener. So if you're ever in a position where you're like, oh my gosh, I have so much of this, what can I do? Obviously, other than sharing, is I used it in as a thickener in a variety of other canning um, canning goods. Um, there's also a couple of ideas you can do too with both the squash and the zucchini, is you can actually do those as well as a stuffed squash. Those kind of a much smaller in inside. Um, you could actually take that zucchini squash, cut it down the middle, and make it a burrito. So, like, you could do, like, an inside Mexican layer and then put the top back on it, and you could actually have a zucchini burrito. So, instead of having a tortilla shell, now you have a zucchini shell. So, there's a ton of options out there for you guys to um, look for uh, the use of, and especially if you need to reduce, and I say this in that, Especially if you need to reduce carbohydrates um, or uh, you're vegetarian, these are other alternatives for, uh, or for a uh, substitute as well. So uh, tons of opportunities to do that. Um, this, the, the other thing too is just like with the butternut squash, it's a sweeter squash. You can do the same thing with it. Again, anything that you might stuff with your turkey or your chicken, think of it again that you could stuff with the same thing. You could actually make this butternut squash um, replace it with, uh, instead of stuffing for Christmas or at Thanksgiving, you could put, take out the middle and you could put apples and oranges and set and do the same kind of uh, mixture that you would probably put in with your uh, 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 stuffing and put that inside your squash. And it's, a, oh, it's so beautiful. It's actually it's just aesthetically beautiful. And then it's tasty. It is something different that nobody else has had before, I'm sure. So um, don't be afraid to, to play with uh, 
your squash and finding other alternatives for further use. See, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the squash out and we're going to give it a flip so the other side is, I apologize, that quite heads away, um, so that it has a, I think that the top gets round. Buy, obviously, if you could save time by getting it already pre ground, um, but if you know it has cellulose, it has another additive that's in there. So, again, if you're trying to reduce out any other potential impurities or things like that, um, I highly recommend uh, grinding your uh, grinding your own cheese so that you, you don't have that in your diet. And uh, this one here, um, I, the recipe says Monterey, and uh, you can do any kind of cheese choice. And for that matter, you don't have to have the cheese, but the nice thing about the cheese in this is that it actually holds it, it gives it uh, the stickiness to pull it all together. Um, you, and you only need one uh, block uh, for, uh, the, for, the, for the recipe altogether. So, and if you have someone that needs that extra spicy, you could also do a jalapeno jack cheese. putting it all back together again. There we go. It's going to warm up just a little bit further and we'll be good to go. The rice is also complete. So what we'll do right now is we'll do our first combination, which is to uh, add the rice into this uh, uh, into here, and then we'll add in the turkey sage combination together. Uh, right now, we're actually going to make what I would call the sticky uh, ooey goodness in this. And since I did my math correctly, I know I have exactly <laughs> my cup and a half of rice. One of the things that we're actually looking at for uh, this season as well is we're actually looking at uh, trying to do mushrooms. I've never done mushrooms before, uh, but we're uh, uh, trying to set up our garden to add in some just other things that we've never tried before. Um, and mushrooms is on the list. You need particular kinds you want to try? Uh, you know what? I'm going to say I have. I am not an expert. Um, I, I'm sure the sh shocky. Um, uh, there are so many different mushrooms out there, and there's actually a starting a following of mushroom foliage, like actually going out to find mushrooms. Um, there is a huge following on because they're so expensive. 
you can go out and they people are finding these mushrooms in remote areas that could be like a two or three hundred dollar mushroom you're like really but yes mushrooms there's it's there's obviously a kind of sore of uh, mushroom opportunities to, to select from so um, i'm only going to need a I can measure this out, but I need basically half a cup. So that's my will be my guesstimate here. And there are other things that, that there are uh, other ways with, especially with the mushrooms, is that you, there are things that you, you can do. Like if you have wood, that there's other like um, the science behind it is adding in certain things uh, into the environment to grow certain kinds of mushrooms um, and the spores and stuff for that. So. As with anything, when I say from a gardening perspective, I always feel like it's a gigantic science project. I never know. Um, uh, from year to year, because um, I have not become an expert at, at uh, any one thing, is uh, how can I improve upon it? Not only improve upon it, um, what did I learn from it? And uh, conditions, weather, all of those all make a difference in how um, anything moves forward. So all we're going to do now is add in the meat. Now we have our stuffing for right away. Um, so gardening, with, especially for squash, uh, and I, especially if you're a gardener. The enemy is the squash bug. The squash bug is not your friend. And I'm, I will tell you, as soon as they invade your garden, you will be fighting them um, consistently until you uh, uh, get them removed. Um, they lay eggs all over your squash and they just keep um, uh, reproducing. Uh, one of the, uh, an organic way to alleviate is actually a little uh, soap and water and spray that down. It helps uh, remove squash bugs. There's a uh, neem oil. There's a couple of organic ways to do it. Um, if you're not going to go all organic, you obviously can find a spray um, to kill the bugs. But what happens with a lot of those uh, sprays is that you're killing off other bugs that you might need, like ladybugs or anything that's uh, another repellent for uh, predator bugs. So um, when you're looking at how do I uh, take care of my squash um, I will tell you you can laugh at me last year I went out and I put duct tape on my hands wrapped it up and I tried to duct tape remove all of those little squash bugs off it worked but it was a lot of duct tape to get out there but I'm like I'm, I'm trying to pick them off but I couldn't get I mean they're just they're obviously they just multiply so yes I was outside with duct tape on my hands trying to remove uh, squash bugs <laughs> And I obviously someone else told me it, or I would not have figured I would not have done that myself. So I'm not the brainchild behind that, but uh, I'll say is I at least tried it uh, as well. I'm going to check real quick on the squash and see where we're at for a May. Coming together. We'll stuff those in just a second. And we will be done. And um, what I did, I added for uh, today uh, is, uh, is I partnered this with a spinach arugula salad, and with that, it's I, I, it has strawberries, it has almonds, and it kind of gives it a different texture between this kind of warm and, and um, warm dinner, uh, filling dinner to something a little bit more uh, light and also having a different flavor of that little sweet and sour in there. So um, we will have that along with it. Um, what we'll also do is um, we will make a homemade balsamic vinaigrette. I mean, you can buy this up obviously at the grocery store anytime, but uh, again, when you buy stuff that's in a jar, um, it has other things in it to give it life, its life consistency in the refrigerator. So with that being said, you can make your balsamic. It's super easy. And wh whenever you're done, either you'll have a little bit or none of it, and you're, it's homemade every single time you make it. So uh, this is another one of those I'll say is a by flavor, meaning you could add in more balsamic if you wanted uh, to, and this is a simple olive oil, balsamic vinegar. 
Um, and there's all different kinds of fall summer berries. You know, they have raspberry, they have other flavors in here, but this is just a simple one. Um, and you can again taste to flavor and you could coat down if you wanted to coat your entire salad, you could. But this is just how simple this is. And it will have a lot of flavor. And there's no other, there's nothing else processed in that. Plus, it gives you a little bit of kitchen uh, space in your refrigerator if you have other things that you're not having to, to refrigerate all the time. All right, next to the final, yay! <laughs> what we're going to do now is we're going to flip these over and what so you guys can see it gave it a little toasty on the top right there all right and then from here it literally is going to be a Stuff, stuff the shell or stuff the insides. And I will tell you, I was telling Karen earlier, I said these were um, so filling. Um, the recipe actually calls for the entire recipe to have three acorn squash. I said, I don't know if I could have, if I had three acorn squash, I would have been six. I said I would have had so many, so much leftovers because one of the, one of these, I think half is what was all it was for dinner. I mean that was that was how much, um, from a proportion perspective, that you could easily cut this in half and have two meals out of one squash. The nice thing too about cutting those ends is it uh, it gives it a more it's not roll it's not rolling all over the place. Here we go. Now all I'm going to do now is to kind of just give it uh, a little pump. Is I'm going to add just a little bit more cheese, you know, sprinkle a little cheese on top, and we will. I'll come back and have a little time on there as well. So. Here is the finished product here, and look how just it's yummy goodness on this. Very pretty, very has a lot of scent to it, a lot of aroma to it. So, um, any questions? Any questions? So, I don't, if you could bring that out in front of the portal sure. just a little bit so that sure. the audience sure. can see sure. the finished product. Don't dump it out, but no, just tip it a little bit. Just don't dump it out. Dip it a little bit. Like, no, no, you didn't. Oh, that, that looks, looks delicious. Do you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Wonderful. Well, 
Well, I have some more come out here in just a second, but we're, we are we are good. Here's the we're recipe. good. Okay. Here's the recipe, and um, if you have, I'll also say is if you guys have any questions about gardening or anything, feel free to ask me afterwards. And um, I hope that you guys will invest in your garden because obviously supply chain issues and things like that. It's not only money back, meaning it's free. You have sweat equity in it, but it's good for your body. So good for your pocketbook and good for your body. Okay, that is absolutely wonderful. And I might mention that our wonderful administrator, Cheryl, has already posted the recipe on Facebook. So those of you out in Facebook land, uh, you can look and find that. It's pretty, pretty easy. And something I know I could do as well, which is exciting. And of course, we're having a strawberry and spinach and walnut salad with this. So you might show that with homemade balsamic vinaigrette. Looks delicious, doesn't it? Notice all the colors, all the wonderful natural colors that she has brought out. And uh, they, it's exciting to think about actually growing it yourself. Now, the squash bug thing, I don't think I would do. But <laughs> well, Mother Nature has, uh, has put them out there into the environment. We want to let you know that uh, Zyda will be back in March, and I believe it's March the 17th. And we're going to do a little March Mania presentation. And I'm going to read my little notes on this. It's healthy uses of cabbage in the diet with a focus on preparation of specialty crack slaw. Is that your own name for that? It is called crack slaw because what you eat it, you want it over and over again. So, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's name is crack slaw. So, we're featuring vegetables that some people do not include in their diet that are very, very healthy. And there are a lot of different applications for cabbage that people don't know about. So she's going to show us some of those. And how easy is cabbage to grow? It is super easy. It's just like grass. It's one of the an easy one as well. So um, we talk about lettuce. Lettuce is just like you just come out there and cut, cut its hair. And within a day or two, its hair is grown out. And you get to keep recycling cabbage is another one that's ahead. Um, and it's easy and it's obviously very inexpensive to do as well. Wonderful. You notice today that Zidal gave us tips on all different aspects of growing the food, preparing the food, and uh, even saving the food and doing other uses. We have some other shows she's going to do coming up this spring that is going to show you how to do such things as making soap out of pumpkin puree. So there are some really neat repurposing ideas that are going to come out of uh, growing the food and using the food for eating as well as other purposes. So uh, what I said earlier today about uh, homestead cooking and natural living being a do-it-yourself journey back in time. Why are we going back in time? We're going to get the lay of the land, like she said. We're not going to shop necessarily all in the, in the grocery store. We're going to be independent and learn how to use our yards and the land that we own to grow our own food. And we're going to reconnect to gardening and preparation and natural living. And this is something that I know you already know a lot about, but you're going to teach us. And I know you're coming up with new ideas. Absolutely. So we are so glad that you came today. We're going to eat while you look at the recipe on Facebook. <laughs> and uh, if you want to come up, you can come up to our next show, March 17th. And of course, um, our In the Kitchen with Susan show will be Tuesday, March 1st at 12. Health literacy is all about teaching you how to cook, how to be healthier, how to, to apply health rules and regulations to your life, how to get out of McDonald's. I have to mention this. I'm always saying this. And uh, just so happens that my schedule has been really congested the last couple of weeks. And I broke most of my rules and I went through McDonald's and had a hamburger. I went someplace else and had a sandwich. I usually don't even eat that much bread. And um, I went someplace else and ended up having French fries. I tell you what, the taste in all of that, after we taste home cooking, after we use natural flavors, and when you realize there's one commercial on TV that talks about there's nothing green in the drive-thru, right? And it's, and it's green, yellow, and orange that are going to make you healthy. 
I am sticking with these wonderful foods because they are healthy for us, they are healthy for you, and we're going to get Oklahoma out of that 48th place in the nation. We're going to make a healthier you, a healthier Oklahoman out of you. So we thank you today. We thank Zydel, and we're so glad to be able to present these wonderful programs to you from the Literacy Services Department of your Bartlesville Public Library. We also want to thank the Institute of Museum and Library Services, the Oklahoma Department of Libraries, and of course, your own Bartlesville Public Library. So this is Joni Elmore, a literacy advocate here at the Bartlesville Public Library. We say thank you for being with us and do come again. Thank you for your price.